Hi everyone. Today we are going to do a demo on View 3 application. Okay, where we are going to consume GraphQL endpoint into the Vue.js application. Okay, for consuming the GraphQL endpoint, we are going to use a library called View Apollo. So this View Apollo is specially designed for the uh, GraphQL endpoint that can be easily consumed from the Vue.js application. Okay. Today we are going to do a small sample where we can fetch the data from the GraphQL endpoint and bind it to a bootstrap table and then we are going to save some data to the GraphQL endpoint server and also we are going to filter some data from the GraphQL endpoint server. Okay, we are going to do all the basic things that we have required to consume the GraphQL endpoint into our Vue.js application and I am going to use latest Vue.js version that is Vue 3 for my demo. Okay. So before going to jump jumping into creating the uh, sample project, let's understand how Vue Apollo library will work briefly. Okay. So if you see here is a small uh, diagram here, you can see a box that represents view component and here it is represent view Apollo library. So what view component will do view component will invoke the will use the Apollo view library. So Apollo view library can trigger the GraphQL endpoint. Okay, so once uh, endpoint returns the response what Apollo library will do means it will source the response from the API into the application in memory storage. Okay, so this in memory storage automatically loads into the view component with their respect to properties okay what what is the benefit of storing in memory storage means we, we are going to reduce a number of uh, network calls okay so this is the flow so here you can see view component interacts with library to consume the api okay and library invokes the graphql endpoint and graphql endpoint returns the response so Apollo view library what will do GraphQL endpoint response stored into the in memory cache. Okay, this cache data will be loaded into the view components with uh, respect to, to their uh, properties that are binded. Okay, that's how uh, Apollo view library works with Vue.js application. Okay, so these are the flow steps just what we have discussed. So let's go through them once again. So view component uses the Apollo view library to invoke the GraphQL endpoint. Here it is satisfying, right? View component invokes the Apollo view library. Uh, uses the Apollo view library to invoke the GraphQL endpoint. Okay. So the response from the API stored into the stored into the in memory cache by default. So by default, future of the Apollo view library is the response, whatever response with that we are going to get from the GraphQL endpoint will directly store into the in memory storage. Okay. So the cache data will be loaded into the view components for binding. So whatever the data is cached will be loaded into the components uh, for the data binding. Okay. The first time component loads only invokes the API call. From the next time, data will be loaded from the cache, which have to reduce the network. What this point uh, explaining means, sorry, whenever we visit our application or loaded, whenever we enter the of any particular component at the first time, then uh, view, Apollo view library invokes the API endpoint. For suppose, I have two routes in my Vue.js application, like home and above. In home, I have one API call, okay? Think like that, one API call. So if I switch between the, menu tabs like home and about only whenever i entered first time into the home home view component at that time only uh, apollo view library uh, invokes the call api call means api call will be called only once now if we api call is already done and data is saved in the cache if i switch between the home and about menu tabs in my application then uh, whenever whenever I enter into the home page data will be binded automatically. So that binded data is loaded from the cache means it won't call 
uh, every time I entered into the component, it won't call the API call. So that is the benefit of the in-memory cache key. Okay. So that's the flow of the a view Apollo library. Okay. So let's jump into creating creating a sample application. So here I am going to use the view CLI command for creating my project. That is view space create and your project name. I will name like view three gql sample so here you can observe uh, i am using the view 3 version okay so my project has been created successfully sample project so now what we have to do means we need to install the uh, apollo view library and its dependent uh, libraries as well okay so let's install them. Okay, so uh, to install the latest version of Apollo and its dependencies, please visit this website b4.apollo.vuejs.org. Okay, in that installation steps, uh, you can see npm install at the rate Apollo options. But before installing this command, we have to make sure we should have apollo client in our uh, application so this is, these are the root library so we have to install them so open them in the another tab and here you can have either you can use vcli plugin uh, which can install all the dependencies and there are few additional uh, boilerplate code for samples as well with this command or you can go for manual installation here I am going to choose manual installation. So here what we require to install means we require to install GraphQL, GraphQL icon tab, and at the rate Apollo slash client. So these three must be installed into our UJS application. So let's let's copy them. Okay, seems like they are installed. Let's check them in the package manager. Here you can observe our libraries like GraphQL, GraphQL tag, and Apollo client. Okay, so next we will install the Apollo view options. Okay, so here at the rate view slash Apollo options. So let's install this as well. Okay, our view Apollo option also successfully installed. Now what we will do just run the application. Okay. Okay, our application is successfully compiled. Okay. Next thing is we have to create a uh, provider for our GraphQL endpoint where we can register our in-memory cache as well as a GraphQL endpoint. Okay, so before creating that provider, I want to show one thing. So, in the browser, if you see here, localhost column six thousand one slash GraphQL. So this is my server GraphQL endpoint, which is running in my local, which I have developed with .NET Core. Okay, so I am going to use this endpoint to accomplish our demo okay this view graph scale entire thing is handled by apollo client so the registration for the graph scale endpoint and the other settings we have i have said we have to create one file right so i will name like apollo.provider.js file okay let's create it okay in the src i will create Apollo dot provider dot yes. So import 
from at the rate Apollo client. I want to load. First, I want to initialize the in memory cache. Okay. So where constant cache equal to new in memory cache. Okay. And from Apollo client, we have to initialize one more instance like Apollo client. Okay. Client equal to new Apollo client. Okay. So here cache, I'm going to assign cache. Okay. And next URA. Okay. So let's copy the URA from the browser. So this is my GraphQL endpoint, right? So copy this command, sorry, URL and paste it over here. Okay, and now import from the red view Apollo options and here create Apollo provider. Okay, so export we have to export this provider constant. Provider equal to create provider. Okay, default client equal to our client. Just we declare. That's all about creating the Apollo provider. So here, what we are doing, we are uh, initializing the Apollo client instance where we are configuring cache, where we are enabling the cache, and as well as URI. Okay, so here any in instantiating cache is must and should. If you don't want how to disable per API, I can explain in later. Okay. So finally, we are exporting our provider. Okay. Okay. Now we have to inject this Apollo provider into our view instance. So for that, what we have to do means go to main.js. Okay. So here, what I will do. dot mount and let's import the Apollo provider import as Apollo provider from Apollo provider okay and to inject this Apollo provider we can use like app dot use okay and Apollo provider dot provider. So this is nothing but provider that we are exporting from our Apollo provider JS file. Okay. So let's save and check the output. It is building compiled. So if you observe now, here we are getting one error that is related to Apollo client. So here it is asking us to install the React, which is not required for a view, but this issue is related to Apollo client. See, Apollo client is a uh, library provider for the GraphQL to all different libraries. Like Apollo provide Apollo client provides a GraphQL library for Vue.js, Angular, React. So it is a third party of the official okay so it is so now the issue we have got is related to that one so to resolve this this may this may won't come with upcoming updates okay please make sure this is not a mandatory command this is currently issue i am facing so it is suggesting to install me okay maybe in future releases it won't come let me install that command So now it has been successfully installed. And now if we run, if you don't get any error, then our Apollo client, uh, view, view Apollo library, okay, installed without any issues and also its configuration also successful, okay?
my application is compiled successfully without any bugs okay so we are done with initial setup right so now let's understand the operations that can be performed with the graphql endpoint so if you uh, know about graphql endpoint there are two main things we have to know that is like query and mutation so query represents fetching the data from the graphql endpoint and query has the ability to uh, define the response payload property okay so to fetch the data query will be used and it, and uh, it also has the ability to request the uh, what kind of property should be uh, generated in the api response so if you observe here there is an object right some sample i have added here query that represent this is a graphql query okay so fetch all gadgets uh, it is a function at the server okay so as a vue.js developer you may not you, you don't require to note this about but i still i am explaining them what are there so this fetch all gadgets is nothing but a function at the server and this name only will be used as a response object property okay so actually that is a method of the server and also same name will be used by the graphql endpoint as the name of the property in the response okay and instead of that you can see id product name brand name cost type and the cost and type so here these are all properties of the entity at the server so what it say means only send me these properties only if you want only id simply you can pass id only that is the beauty of the graph here okay this is what query means so how we can implement this query into our uh, graphql endpoint sorry vue.js application so query implementation so if you observe here view apollo library provides a special object like apollo so if you already know about vue.js it is like a, a set of properties and whose values are like objects like method data property some life cycle properties like that so once we configured view apollo library just we did right so it will provide a new property that can be added into our view application that is nothing but apollo okay so view library provides a special object like apollo where we have to declare all our queries so it's saying that we can uh, add a property like uh, apollo whose value is a object and inside of that object we can def define all our graphql queries we want to consume within our component okay so each query result will be listened by each individual data property so each query what we will define inside of the apollo object will have individual data property in the normal uses data property object or a function okay so each query result will listen by the each individual data property which will automatically invoke the graphql endpoint on using this data property so here is the beauty of fetching the data i mean so if you observe here here is apollo ob object right so here i declared one query that is fetch all gadgets and instead in, inside of it i have defined my gql is a like a, a parsing key that should be prefixed before the query so inside of it here you can see back tick so inside of it is nothing but normal graphql query this query okay this query and if you observe this query is assigned to a query property instead of fetch all object so here we should maintain few naming conventions where uh, apollo view library can understand so if you observe in the gql which is the original query it has fetch all gadgets right and i also mentioned it will returns response with that with that object only with that object only right so whatever the response it will return so here you can see query fetch all gadgets right response object i have already mentioned right fetch all objects will be the response object property name 
so this name should be given as query registration name here here inside apollo whatever the properties that are nothing but query registration name so these names must be matched with the response property object name okay so if you don't want here fetch all gadgets if you given like something like uh, xyz you have given xyz colon and you have specified your query then this uh, xyz can't be understand by the uh, apollo view library directly in that case if you want to give another name uh, here after query we can add one more property and we can return the response type at that time xyz can be understand by the uh, apollo view so that approach i am not showing here so i am going with the by default convention where this return type must be match here so whatever the query registration property fetch all gadgets we have used right same property should be declared in the data properties here you can see data inside of return fetch all gadgets and its array type same name must be invoked so once this data property fetch all gadgets binded into the database what will happen means sorry binded into the html what will happen means it will automatically runs this query means graphql endpoint invokes the api call okay so that is the default naming convention so let's show me how the response look like then you can get more idea so this is my api graphql endpoint and this is my query we are going to consume now so if i run see i have got some response right if you observe root property will be data and inside of it child property like is fetch all gadgets this is nothing but this name okay so we have seen right response name is fetch all gadget that is why this property should be like this only now let's uh, try to consume that query endpoint so that we can understand more easily okay so i'm going to create a new component like uh, home dot view okay okay so this is my home component so here what i will do i am going to invoke the our query this query graphql query and we are going to bind this data to the bootstrap data table bootstrap table okay so first let's uh, add bootstrapping so for that go to bootstrap go to docs and here you have css right copy that and index.html that is in public folder okay go to that file so here above the closing head tag let's add the push of css okay so now here what i am going to do here i am going to bind a table so before binding table uh, let's uh, add our query into the our script file okay so i have mentioned right uh, where we can use apollo to register the query so i can write apollo okay so here i have what is my query my query is this one fetch all gadget so copy this query and here so i cannot add query directly i need to define a query registration name so what i mentioned this name should be used as a query registration registration name so that by default it will follow the naming conventions okay so what i will do i will copy that name and create like a property and here i can specify another property like query and i can assign here this query but i can't assign query directly okay i need to have graphql tag that is import sql from graphql tag okay so it is query and gql tag and open the back ticks 
and paste here our query. Okay, so what we have did, I have registered a polar object. Inside a polar object, I have added a query registration name that should be matched with this name. If you want to give another name, this one, like something. So you should have to explicitly uh, give the output. So that is different thing and not using here. Okay. So fetch all gadget. And inside of that, you have to create a query and where you need to specify the GraphQL tag. And inside of the back disk, you can specify your entire query. So here my query is go to the server, search for this method, and in the response, only send me these properties. Okay. So that is my query. So I have also mentioned this property should have a data property. So let's create a data function. This is GraphQL only. Okay. Copy this. I am expecting array of results, right? So initially I will assign dummy. Okay. Now automatically this property will listen from the output from this. So whenever we bind this property to our HTML, okay. Automatically this query gets executed. Okay. So everything is taken care by the Apollo view library behind the scenes by following the naming convention. Okay. So that's it uh, about writing the script, JS uh, code. Just now, now we can bind it to the table. So I have already created some uh, uh, bootstrap template with some designing. So I am going to copy paste it. If you want, you can pause the video and type it. So I have added my bootstrap table. Okay. So here, what I'm doing inside of the template, I have created div, a div that contains container, bootstrap size. These are inside of it. I have created another div, and I will I make it as a row, and I am taking margin top. Okay, one pixel, and uh, here is my table, and I have also specified my a uh, column headers of my table rows. Okay. Now here I have to use this data property to bind the table content. So what I will do here. Okay, I want to loop the here. So I'm going to use V for okay. So local variable I will name like item in this fetch all properties and here i can specify key and its value like unique value like i am going to give the id property item dot id okay so instead of td i can specify here i can specify tds okay you have to bind five so i am going to up paste it Okay, so ID item dot ID item dot column names here there so copy paste them Austin type. Item dot cost. Item dot type. Okay, that's it. We are done. So let's run our application and see. So whenever we entered into this component, this data property, since it is binded in the HTML. So it will automatically listen for the changes in the Apollo. Since it is binded, Apollo, what it will do, it will trigger this query API call. Okay. And it will 
execute this query and results will be as then back to this property. So now let's run and check the output. Uh, before checking output, go to you. So let's remove the existing code. Let's remove the hello world, hello world references. Okay, these default CSS styles. Get rid of this. Okay. Do what I will do. I will use home component. Okay. Import home from component slash home. Okay. And register the home. Okay, now run the application. Missing closing tag. Add self closing tag. Okay, now it's running. So let's open in the browser our website. localhost colon 8080. Okay, my table is coming. Let's wait if the data is, will bind or not. Okay, bind cannot bind. Some spell stick. See, now I am able to see my table content. All the data is binded. Okay, now open the development tool. Go to networks. And check on the feature XHR. If I reload, I just entered right. You can see automatically API call is invoked. See, here is a query, query request for our GraphQL and response. See, everything automatically binded to the uh, our uh, HTML through naming convention. Okay, so that's how GraphQL Apollo will work. Okay, now what we will do means we are going to create a another component like create form dot view. So there we are going to add a small form in upcoming steps. But what we will do, we will create a new component and we are going to install view router and we are going to enable the view route. And also we are going to add a menu bootstrap menu and then what we will do means we are going to check how the cache will work. I have mentioned right we are using in memory cache in Apollo provider. So how effectively it will use the in memory cache and how we can disable it if you want. All those things will be understood in a few minutes. Okay. So now the thing is. We have to install the first. Let's create a, another component like create view, create form view. Okay, in the components. Okay, so this is my second component. Now we are we have to install the view router library for configuring the routing. So to install. Vue.js library for view 3. We have to go next.router.vue.js.org. Okay, by default, you Google it, you will get the uh, Vue.js second version router, and there only you will see an option for next.router.vue.js.org. So please go there. Okay, and your command should be like this npm install router at the rate 4. Okay, this is for view 3. Okay, let's install it. Oh, view router successfully installed. Okay, now we have to configure the routing settings. Okay, to configure, let's add a new JS file like app router.js. Okay, so let's close them all at the level of SRC. 
let's add a file like app router.js okay so here what i can do uh, first let me import few things from view router okay so what i want to install means create router and create web history okay so let's import them and constant routes path begins with slash this is for my landing and here here i want to load a component that is my home component so import the components as well okay home from home component okay and also import the create form also so create form from component slash create form view okay so now assign the components home as well as let's create a path for our create form also and path should be start with slash and i will name like create form okay let's add the component create form component okay these are my routes so now export app router equal to create router and in the configurations routes pass our routes constant okay history pass create web history and let's add it down first let's add history so it should be export constant okay so we are done with our routing configuration now we need to inject it into the uh, view instance just we did like for uh, apollo providers so let's go to main.js so here import the star as app router okay from slash app router js and here app dot use i can specify app router and what i am exporting exporting also app router okay app router or else let's name it like router okay so now what i can do i can use router okay uh, we need to add a bootstrap menu and as well as we need to add some uh, menu configuration so that we can navigate between our two components okay so to do that we have app view so this is like a layout where we have defined our home right so here we will update logic like i have already have a code snippet for my menu so i'm going to copy paste my time copy paste it and explain what inside of it everything so if you want you can pass and type to follow my steps okay here is my bootstrap menu so here these are everything bootstrap only you can understand if you go to the bootstrap official website okay only thing you have to know is uh, i have used some view components like default components like router link and as router view so this router view means the content of the component will be rendered here whatever inside of this placeholder 
so this is to render the other component content and is router link means for navigation here we need to specify our routes at for two attribute here i am specifying home and create from i am specifying create from route okay and uh, no need of importing home component so let's get rid of all these things okay so finally my code looks like this okay app view we have just updated the app dot view now if you run our application uh, expected output is we should have a bootstrap menu with the uh, fluid uh, navigation between them okay so let's run the application okay app is run successfully without any issues so let's go to the browser so if i reload my page see now i am having bootstrap menu so if i navigate between them see so i have a, some pretty beautiful application now where i can navigate with my menu and also i have data binding with the graphql endpoint so here my main goal is to show the cache right cache implementation so for that let's open network calls and if i reload i am on the home page right so first time entering into the component at that time uh graphql api call should be done okay see i am reloaded api call here invoke if i na navigate to create form okay if i come back to home again see i am having data but there is no api call understand right so n number of time if i navigate and come back there is no api call going but data is binding that is loading from the in memory okay so if you recall our diagram apollo library only one time invokes the graphql and next time onwards uh, it will load the response from the in memory storage which is previously saved okay that is happening there okay so that is how in memory cache will work but if you don't want for this api to be load cache means every time you enter into the, into the component you want to call a fresh you want to send a fresh request request to the server there is a one option like fetch policy so there you can define no cache so each individual query can define their own fetch policy so to do that let's go to home component so inside of our gadget this is my gadget right so below the query property i can define fetch fetch policy and its value like no cache now whenever i entered into the component since it is registered with fetch policy like no cache so every time we entered into the component fresh request will be invoked to the api so let's save it and check in the browser okay i'm going to home page what i will do i will reload okay first time entered graphql it's working as it is as usual some error okay i have added outside of the fetch all gadgets property it should be inside of the fetch all gadgets property okay now if i go to my application now reload okay now go to create form sorry go to network calls go to home page reload again okay first time it is involved go to create and clear the network call now come back to home page see again graphql endpoint is invoked n number of times which many times i will enter into the component that many times a fresh fresh request will be invoked so that is how to disable the cache if you don't want the default functionality of the apollo client library that provides cache with the apollo view library okay I, this is a plain query there is no dynamic uh, or no query parameters nothing this is a plain query okay now 
I want to have some filter on my sample, like where I can add a search bar, okay? And there, I can uh, send some dynamic data, like a query parameters, where normal API calls, where we can send query parameters, right? Same way, query can be have uh, query parameters as well, okay? So how to implement them, okay? So query with parameters. So in GraphQL, query parameters, so query can be achieved by using the variable objects. Okay, so if you observe here sample, looks like normal query, but there is one input parameter like dollar brand query. This is nothing but a name. That name can be called as variable name. Okay, so this is a dynamic value. Okay, and this should be passed like this. Okay, so here, dollar dot brand query is there right that is a variable i have mentioned right it should be have a variable object see here below it's same name and its value should be what is the query parameter value okay so this is how uh, query parameters looks like so let me show it in my browser server you can understand more easily this is my server application right here i have another tab with query parameters okay so here is brand query is my uh, variable name see here variables tab is there right brand variable so here i'm searching for samsung so what it will do means i'm, I'm going to server this value will be passed to this variable this variable to this variable this is a function name so function name for brand this is a variable at this this variable this is a variable at the server so, so, so to that server variable, we are assigning the or variable value that is brand query. Okay, if I search, see, I will get all Samsung only. Okay, so if you want another product like OnePlus, let's search for OnePlus. Okay. So, I'm searching for OnePlus. See, now I'm getting all the products that are related to OnePlus brand. Okay, so this is how query will work. So how this query can be used by the Apollo view library? Let's understand it. So in Apollo, we have to do like this. So if you observe, it is almost look like old one only, like query only changes, we will have a variable here. So here variable is written like a function, right? So there are two kind of two kind ways we can de uh, declare this variable. Either you can declare like a function or you can declare like an object. So if you declare like an object, it is not reactive. Okay, it is not reactive. Means uh, any values that change inside of the variable, if it is reactive, it will automatically invoke the API. We we no need to call explicitly automatically on change of variable uh, api call will be done to do that to get the reactiveness we need to use uh, function only if if at all if you don't change your uh, query parameter it is a fixed and it it can be loaded one time only on entering into the component at the time what you can do means you simply write like a object instead of a function and you can assign the values here so Apollo view library can use the either variable as an object or react to function, which I have explained just now. The react to function will be most commonly using approach because uh, on change of variable, the API call will be done. Okay, so in this approach, if the values in variable function changes automatically, API trigger. Okay, let's implement query with parameters. So how our example change means currently this is table, right? I want to add a search bar on top of the table. I'm clicking the search button. I have to get the expected result. Okay. Means observe here. This is another query. Previously, this query is used, plain query, where we'll get all the data without any filter. This is another query. So now what I have to do, I need to update the existing, I need to remove this query. Okay, this query function name is old query function name is fetch all gadgets new query function name is 
filter by brand. So I want to use this for normal rendering as well as the search by filtering also because I can't use it two separate queries, right? For same result. So what I will do, I will update the this query in my sample with this one. Okay. Initially, I will send empty variable. Uh, that means it will fetches all the data from the server for me. Okay. So what I will do, let's update it first. Later, we can think about the query parameters. Okay. So copy that. Okay, so that that is my query with parameters and I don't want to disable cache. I am removing. So this is variable I have mentioned, right? So we have to create the variable function because uh, on change of such value, I have to invoke this API call automatically. So to do that, I am going to use variable as a function. Okay. Return object like so what is my brand query okay so this value should be dynamic means that loads from the uh here so for now data properties so i will name like brand query here so this way will be as in this dot brand query so Initially, let's assign its value to empty. Okay, so it will fetch us all the data when we enter into the component. Now, let's add a search bar button, a search, search bar text box, as well as the search button. Okay, so here you can observe my newly added a child container, and I'm taking margin top three. Okay, some spacing I will get. Now here I have small form with the input field and the button. So what I will do, I will enable two way binding. So here, one thing you have to remember is if you assign this data property, okay, to this test book, uh, test box, what will happen whenever you enter into the such text box, anything one key then automatically api call will be triggered because it is react to right this property is react to so automatically it will trigger the api so if it is a pure search some such results you want to show you can do but i want to use the search button right so i am i won't use this property directly i will create one more property duplicate property like search query such value okay is also initially empty and i will bind this property there so on button click i want to assign this value into the brand query data property object so this value changes then automatically triggers the api call so only on button click only API call will be triggered because only button click only uh, we are changing the uh, value. Okay. So I will create methods property in there. I will add search. Okay, so here what I will do simply this dot brand query equal to this dot such value since it is a inside of the react to variable right react variable function its value once change API call will be automatically done we no need to call anything explicitly okay I have a search method also so if I run if everything is good I can filter the data.
here we have to do one more changes my gadgets property name is changed right query filter query i need to change the registration name that is why i'm not getting the data because it is following naming convention right it unable to find fetch all gadgets object so copy this filter fry brand and replace fetch all gadgets and same thing should be done here and also here now if i test i can see the output see now i got the output now if i search like one plus so let's uh, open the network call as well so on button click something wrong i think it is v model okay so enable two way binding so change it and now test again okay initial api call is done and if you go to network calls and headers so if you scroll down you can see it it has empty variable if i set something like one plus still not working I have given wrong name here variable cities so now it should work initial call is done if i enter samsung you see now call is went and if you check here variables you can see variable like samsung if i enter one plus again call will go and in variable you can see one plus so this is the query parameters for so what happening so the react to function automatically invoking the call so for react to function any data change api call will be triggered again and again okay so that is how uh, filtering can be enabled with the query okay so and finally we are going to touch our last topic in this graph kill that is mutation so what is mutation so mutation is to post the data to the server means saving the data to the server so query means fetching mutation is uh, storing the data so like query mutation will have mutation and it will have a variable name you can see variable here that variable contains data to be posted to the server and here also after saving if something is returning from the response here also you can specify how how the response should be like like id product name if you observe here we are only calling id and product name right we are saving product name brand cost and everything but we are fetching only id and property so like that also it is possible with the mutation so let's implement the mutation with apollo view library so how to do that so in query what we have done we have registered apollo object right in the view component in for mutation we should not use like that what we can do means this dot dollar dot apollo can be accessed that is directly available from the view apollo library so you can access directly this dot dollar dot apollo dot mutate and inside of the mutate see here like query here is you have to define your mutation variable okay so and here you can see method like update so this update okay what method what it will help means you, once you have saved your object to the server if object is returning that saved object so this update method will execute once the response is add from the server so instead of it what we can do means we can update the uh, we can update the in memory cache so what it will happen once we saved and navigate back to our home page instead of calling since our uh, uh, table data is all loaded from the in memory cache right so we have already update our new record in the if you already update our new record in the in memory cache it will automatically bind it to the our table when we enter it back into the home page so that is the help so in this update method we can update the newly saved record into the in memory cache so that 
it will reflect it automatically into our table once we enter into that comp. So that is the update. And then then is a then is also like a done subscription where unsuccessful like that or on catch. If the catch occurs, you can add any notification message there. Okay. So this is the basic structure how to implement the mutation. Okay. Let's jump back to our sample and open the create form. Uh, I want to create a form. Okay, where I can create the uh, one record into the server using the this dot dollar dot Apollo dot mutate method. Okay, first let's create a form. Okay, first let me create the da data properties for two way model binding for the form. Okay, so okay, I want to create the form variable. So to save some time, let me copy paste my property snippet. Okay, these are all my properties that I am going to buy into the form. Okay, let me add now my form snippet. Okay, HTML snippet. So this is my form with around four fields. Okay, so my form heading is a create gadget, and here you can see every form I have to be model binded with my gadget start product, gadget start brand, gadget dot cost, and the gadget dot type. Okay, now and also added here button. Okay, now we will create a method and we are going to register that method to this button. So for that, go to scripts and add like methods. And there I will add like a add gadgets. Okay, here we can use like this dot. I have mentioned right dollar dot Apollo can be provided by us by the library dot mutate. Okay. And inside of it, we have to configure everything that we require. So here I can add a property like mutation. In uh, query what we did instead of the property, right? One property here, no need to create that property, but query, query parameter, right? Same way here, mutation, 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 and here also we should import the GraphQL tag. So import the tag EQL from GraphQL tag, and now I can use GQL tactics, and let's go to my browser to get the mutation query. So this is my server, right? So in this tab, I have stored my Mutation query. So here you can observe the mutation query. So copy this mutation query, paste it here. Your mutation query. Okay. So what we have did, we are registered our mutation. Okay. So this mutation has variable, right? We have to register our variable also. So now we have to register or create our variable. If you recall previously, I have mentioned right variable either can be an object or a function. So function we have to use when you when we want reactiveness. Reactiveness means we want to more frequently interact with the server. If you don't want to more frequently invoke means automatically it will invoke the API call on a change in the variable. So here that is the not the case, right? Only one time only when we click on save button, that time only. Uh, if he has any value, values to the variables is enough. Okay, so because of that here, I will create variable. Okay, here no need of creating a method. If you create method, that will be a problem because if you change one field in the form, it will automatically post as, as our API call. Okay, so here what we are going to do, we are going to variables as a object. Okay, so it root property should be my gadgets. I'm copying that, and its value should be this dot. Uh, what is my? I can directly give this property data property. Okay, so we have uh, finished with our mutation query implementation as well as the variable declaration. Okay, so now next thing is we have to work with update method. 
so update method will get executed once the response is written from the server so the latest record which we added in the server can be updated into into our cache instead of the update method we have to implement our logic okay data and here we need to specify our return type so if you recall what is return type object name filter brand brand name inside of query filter brand name is written type and used here right similarly here what is written type means save only so i need to pass it here okay so i can get the new record from that variable i want to push the newly saved record into the collection of record that is already loaded in our home component oh right so from the store we have to fetch the all the records from the store for cache to do that what you have to do means constant what we have to do means we have to prepare a query so prepare a query means what is the query to fetch the data from the server this is the query right variable and the query right this variable and the query so here also same variable same query and variable should be executed against our in memory cache whatever query we are going to send to the server should be sent to the cache as well so cache can understand the graphql query and which way server returns the response same way cache will re returns the entire response so first let's prepare the query for that get gadgets query equal to object what i will do i will copy these two lines and i will paste it here so here one thing we have to remember we don't need reactiveness here because on change we are not calling the some api so what i can do i simply return the object directly okay and here always i want to get all the data right it should be empty okay so what we have did we have created the same old query to filter the cache but uh, this query can be used again so what i will do i will create a constant okay so it will be reusable why i am creating constant you can understand in upcoming steps so what i will do i would say constant like uh, get uh, get query equal okay gadget query equal to this way gadget query okay now i have query now i need to filter it against the store okay to do that okay listing data i can use so this those are uh, immutable record so i am cloning the entire object object dot assign i want to assign it to the empty object and now i will filter the store store dot read query so to this method i can pass my get gadget query constant variable okay so now i will have all the data here and new data equal to empty array okay and new data dot push my newly saved object will be available here in this save parameter so i can pass that save for let i equal to 0 i less than existing data what it will have means it will contain it is like data property dot and it will store the array with this name only 
Okay. So I can extract here dot length I can specify. Okay. I press press. Okay, in this for loop, what I will do? New data, I'm going to push into new data, existing data. Okay, I'm pushing into new data. And finally, what I will do means I will reassign this data back here. So, what I'm doing, I am adding the new record on top of the collection okay so will as a new data so now my data that was loaded from the store has up to date data now i need to push it back to the store so to do that what you have to do means store dot Right query. Okay, again, this right query should have these variables. Okay, same for writing also, we need to pass the same query variables. But here, for getting what we have prepared query and the variables, right? So same will be used here writing also, but here we have to push our new data, right? What we have to do means for data existing. Okay, it will push us into the store new data. So what I am doing in the update method once the response comes, I am preparing the get GraphQL query, same way query which we prepared for the uh, requesting the server, same way we will prepare the query. This time instead of server, we request the store, store nothing but in memory cache. Once we get the data, we are updating the data with the newly saved record data also. Once that is done, we are updating the store by writing the right query method. Okay, so that's how it will work. And finally, then write like, then, console dot log dot data and if any errors we like catch any error for now I will log okay so one more time let's have a look here so what we are doing in the method we have created add gadgets method and here using this dot apollo dot mutate if you observe this dot apollo object is never been created here but this is provided by the apollo view library so using mutate method first register the mutate command okay this is my mutate command okay so here we are using variables right obviously mutation means variable will exist because we are posting data so we need to register the variable if you observe here registered variable as object because i don't want any reactiveness okay only one difference is there object to means non-reactive function means reactive for the variable okay so here i have created object and this object value comes from the form model binding data i'm directly passing the form model binded data okay update method is to update the store and finally returning so only thing i have to do now is i need to register this add gadgets method for the button clicks okay and also once i have added i want to navigate back to the my home page so this dot dollar dot i believe router router dot push and i can specify the path home page right simple slash is enough okay so we are done with this logic 
let's run and look our uh, form remove this column and dot okay now it is running let's go to our application so first reload the home page so now data is saved into the will be saved into the store okay now clear the network call and go to create form so here we can see the form right so let me add like water purifier and uh, int something like thousand bugs and int type like uh, water purifier okay now click on create we should see api call must be invoked and after successful save it should be navigated back to our home page okay it create see id id itself represents it is coming from the server and it is stored into the server if you see the graph here if you go down see water purifier can or posted data or form posted data and in response in response you can see our newly re recorded data came to the server but if you observe this is automatically once saved automatically navigated to home page and you can see it is added on top of our page here i need to change So that is why it is duplicated to one. If you reload, it will come exactly. Okay. Let me add one more product. Okay. Create and one more product like uh, what kind of gadget? Apple Watch brand Apple. One thousand bucks and type is watch and click on create now below records are good right previously everything is one okay now my record is added successful so that is how uh, mutation will work okay so we are completely done with our sample we have checked a graphql consumption using query mutation as well as queries with uh, parameters as well so I hope this video has delivered some useful information to you all. If you like my video, please do support me by subscribing, subscribing to my channel. Soon we'll meet again with a new video. Until then, signing off.